Should you start your own HVAC business? Why don't HVAC employers pay what you're worth? Should you start your own business or is it going to consume your whole life? Or should you do something else? Today I'm answering a question from my member, Ryan. Ryan, thank you so much for becoming a member, getting my email, and sending me this email. I'm going to answer this question. If there's anybody out there that has a lot of experience in the field and you have advice, you think that you could really give good advice to help Ryan make the best decision because what we want to do is we want to give him insight to where he has a more successful career because his choice is just better because of knowledge that we have experience that we have if you're out there watching you got this experience you've been through this you know what he should do please comment below because that will make a difference thank you ryan for the question questions become content that's what we're doing today we're answering that question if you have any more questions please do not hesitate to ask because i am here to help before we start, hit the like button, subscribe, and smash that bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing. This is HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad. Let's go ahead and start with the today's question. Hey, Tad, I've had some questions, and I was hoping to see if you could give me some advice. I'm a member of your YouTube channel, and I appreciate the videos you put out. You're welcome. The questions that I have is I've been in this industry for the last 12 years. That's a long time. And for the last three of those years, I jumped over to the industrial side of the HVAC world. Prior to that, I was in a residential company for the other nine years. So nine years residential, three years industrial. That's nice. I thought skilled trades paid well. And what I've seen in my career up to this point is that it doesn't really pay very well for the amount of work that you do. I was wanting to know what your thoughts of running your own shop were. Is it worth it? Does it pay well for the amount of work you have to put in? Or does it just completely consume your life? I've got some business sense, really the basic, basics of understanding overhead costs and pricing. I'd like to hear your thoughts after years of learning and hundreds of dollars spent on training after work. I'm a bit disappointed that companies don't want to pay what you're worth and lowball you every step of the way, even when you're giving the company more value than what they're paying. I'm looking at going to college and retiring the gauges for an engineering degree if 45 to 60K is all that you can really make as an HVAC technician. Any advice would be appreciated, Tad. Thanks in advance. So I think we got four or five questions here. And first, I want to say that if you've got 12 years experience in the residential field as a technician and industrial as well, then you've got enough experience that I think, especially when you understand overhead, pricing, then you should start your own business. You should try it once. I think everybody should own their own business. Why? Because they will know the pros and the cons, the advantages and the disadvantages. One thing that really uh, can ruin a HVAC business quick is not understanding overhead and pricing. And when you go to a job and you don't price it correctly and you don't make money, you can't do that more than two or three times before you end up going out of business. So, I think that you really, you probably have thought about this a lot, and I think you need to try it. One thing you need to understand about owning your own business is it takes years to get a good reputation and to get a good client base, and as long as you're willing to work really hard and you are willing to put in the work that it's going to take for those first two or three or four or five years to really establish yourself, then you're going to reap good benefits. Another thing that you need to think about is when you have a good team, that's what makes a good business work. And when you're going to be your one man show starting out, I'm assuming that's what you're going to do and you're not going to have any help. That means you're going to have to be the office staff, the secretary, the dispatcher. You're going to have to be the one who records all the information and you schedule it and you go out and you do the job and you do the install, you do the service, you do the sales. So it can be quite stressful. And my question to you is for the companies that you have worked for, if they're not paying what you're worth and you're putting in more than what they're paying, then why can't you just scale back your hours a little bit? Scale back your hours, don't work as much and make the same amount of money. And then with the time that you have, go out and do side work. And another, another thing I want to tell you, and this may be, well, this is going to the other question. 
uh, looking to retire the gauges, you already have this experience. You already have this knowledge. You already have this skill. Put it to work. Put it to work with that engineering um, goal or career that you're wanting to do. Because right now, I work as an engineer for a medical manufacturing company. And I actually, I started that maybe two or three months ago, but I think it's great because this is great for this question. I build machinery that's used in operating rooms in Vanderbilt Hospital. I live near Nashville, and I've built three of these machines so far. They bring me a chassis, and I fill it out with a refrigeration system, and it creates slush. And that slush is used to pack the body during open-heart surgery. It keeps tissues and, and organs from being damaged. I do not think that you need a degree, my friend. You already have a good base of knowledge. You have this experience that's created this skill. So use that skill. And another thing is it's... it's the internet, so much free knowledge. We live in an information age. All you have to do is get on the internet. You've got all these books. You've got all these courses at your fingertips. Why do you have to spend that money to go to college? And you have to spend that time too. Don't, don't do that. Spend the time learning on your own. Spend the time trying to resource and find a manufacturing company that you can work for and tell them your skills. Ask them if they have a need. Hey, do you have a need to build a refrigeration system? It's just a thought. It might not be the direction, but I want you to think about the fact that you have all this experience. If you go to college, you're going to have to spend some money, and you're going to have to pay that debt off, so that's automatically going to create a little bit of overhead for you. Um, you don't have to go to college to learn, and there's so many people that are hiring. They may offer the training that you need if you want to get into that engineering career that you're talking about. So... I hope that answers a little bit of your question. As far as 45 to 60K, I know people that make over 100K and they live in the city. And if you don't live in a city, you can move to the city and make that 100K. I know uh, people that are working for grocery stores. And if you don't have any, any background in refrigeration, start doing some refrigeration. If you have to work for another company or work for yourself, start doing some refrigeration. Refrigeration will pay you more money. Commercial work will pay you more money. And if you're only making 45 to 60K and you're doing commercial industrial work, then you probably do need to work for a different company. And if you're only working eight hours a day and you're not working 12 hour days, you're working eight hour days and you're only making uh, or you're not you're not working 12 hour days you need to start working 12 hour days and making more than 45 to 60 if you're already making if you're already working 12 hour days and you're only making 45 to 60 there's a problem especially if you're in the commercial industrial side because there's a lot of people and not just sales people that are making this 100k although sales is something when you work for a company that pays commission and you live in a big city, you're going to make really good money. I know people that are making ten and $15,000 per month and they're doing sales. And it's not just commercial sales, it's residential sales, just residential sales. So it really depends on what company you work for, how big they are, and what your location is. Uh, and But I really, I would like to know more. I'd like to know how many hours you're working and you know what what specifically you're doing. You definitely can make more money in this trade and if you start your own business, you're going to start with overhead. I definitely agree that you should start really small. Start really small with anything to do with starting your own business. But when you start a business, you're going to have some overhead. You're going to have a building. You're going to have that lease or that rent or that payment. And then you got to get, if you're going to do sheet metal work, you got to get all the sheet metal equipment, the stomp shear and the Pittsburgh machine and just all that. If you're going to do, you know, square metal duck like we do, if not, then you got round duck. You got to get with a distributor. You got to be able to pay whether it's net 30 or net 45 or net 60, which is usually net 30. You got to be able to pay that bill every month, which you can get a credit card. But I mean, just you got to think about these things. Now, there's a lot of companies that don't pay very well and they want to keep employees in the same spot and they don't want to offer training you can quickly identify the ones who want to keep them in the same spot and the ones that don't so make sure that you understand how to identify the company you're working for and if it's a good company if it's a good fit and you're going to be able to achieve the goals but for me why don't you do side work scale back your hours start doing side work for yourself start building up something for yourself if you do want to do your own business or like i said if you really want to go into the engineering there are plenty of companies out there that would love to have somebody like you that's had the experience, that knows how to 
uh, maybe build a refrigeration system or um, do some wiring. Remember, if you're in the HVAC field, that means you know plumbing, you know electrical, you know HVAC, you might know some welding. We have to do welding when we do gas lines inside walls and you have to do electrical, you have to do plumbing. If you've got your general mechanical contractor license, your CMC, then that covers you for plumbing. Uh, electrician license. Have you thought about getting your electrician license? If you haven't, getting your electrician's license is something else that you may be able to branch off into something else with that. So can it consume your life? Yes. Owning your own business can definitely consume your life. If you're, if you're not working weekends now and you're a technician, you know, being on call, you're definitely going to work weekends when you own your own company. So I think that's it. I, I hope that I answered your question and I gave you the best advice. I'm sure I'll read back through this. I don't think you should give up those gauges. I don't think you should do it. You've already spent all this time. And anybody that's watching this, please comment below. Let me know what you think about the advice I've given. What would you say? Ryan, I hope you enjoyed this video and this gave you some insight that was useful to you. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.